from your customers. Thanks, Kim. Are y'all hearing anything about um, about that from your customers? Are you getting in situations at this point where people aren't qualifying? Um, obviously, they're not qualified for as much, but is it is it kind of knocking them out, out of the market place? Anybody hearing anything on that? I've had agent or buyers whose interest rate have has increased over the amount of time that we have been looking. And in a result of that, I've had like 550 buyers come down to like 490 because of the rate increase and where their comfort level is. So I've seen a little bit of that, but um, it hasn't affected a whole lot of my people, but that's one example specifically. Yeah. 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 It's definitely good. I mean, it's definitely impacting the buying power for sure. I mean, they've jumped up. I think, you know, I read somewhere it's been like 30% jump in the last 90 days. Oh, he's calling. Hang on one second. This is our speaker. Hey there. Are you jumping on? No, it's 10 central. That's okay. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> okay, awesome. Well, we got several people on, so we'll see you here in a sec. Okay, okay, bye. That's what I was afraid happened. With the time difference, he was like, oh my gosh, I had it in my calendar for 11, his, his time. Anyway, he's jumping on, he's ready. He goes, yeah, I've got all my information. I just had it wrong. So I was afraid that might've happened. But we, but um, anyway, so anybody else while he's jumping on, um, hearing anything or, you know, one, I think maybe next week or in a couple of weeks, we should talk about this. And it's like, how are we, you know, what kind of conversations do, you know, we might want, we want to start having with not only our clients, but with our lenders, um, you know, in, in the past, when the interest rates have jumped up a lot, you know, what becomes popular or adjustable rates and things like that. So we want to, as agents, be able to position ourselves in the best way to be able to help guide our clients, um, you know, I'm not saying we're quite right, right. I'm not saying we're quite there yet, but, um, you know, with, if you've been keeping up with everything, I mean, they're expecting interest rates to be six plus by the end of this year. Um, and I think they're expecting another hike at the end of May. So, you know, they've moved so fast. The end of last year, we were in the high threes. And as I said, talking to my lender yesterday, we're at five and a quarter, and that's for people with great interest rates. So, I mean, with great credit. So um, definitely, um, yeah, definitely going to be a topic that, you know, we should probably talk and mastermind around. But, um, but Andrew is on. Welcome, Andrew. <laughs> hey, what's going on, guys? I'm so sorry about that. I had a little hiccup with my uh, timing there. No, oh, you're you're great. Well, we're glad to have you. Um, and since we're running just a couple of minutes late, I want to jump right into it. Let you. I know you've got a lot of content, um, but real quick, Andrew, before we jump into that, why don't you just give everybody that's on here just maybe a two minute background on yourself for those of those of uh, the uh, agents that don't know who you are. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I started in real estate in 2014 at Keller Williams, um, stayed there for a few years, moved over to ERA, um, stayed there until um, some amazing folks told me about eXp and uh, split up with my business partner. I had a small team. Uh, we did about uh, 176 transactions in our last year. Uh, I think there was five of us. Um, and so me and my business partner didn't see uh, eye to eye where we wanted to keep our friendship. So we kind of split up and I started again from scratch in 2020. Um, so just me again, um, went down to, I think, 57 sales that year, um, built it back up. And that was 2020. So from 2020 until now, um, we built it from that to eight agents and four admin. Um, and we're on track for about 200 and probably 20 this year. I'm shooting for 243. Um, but we're on track for about 220 this year. Oh, that's fantastic. Y'all are killing it there. So, and we're excited here. And so, you know, I hate that you went down to 57 deals, you know, at some, agents, <laughs> some agents on here are going, oh my gosh, they went down to 50, only 57. But, um, you know, I know one of the things that you do to, you know, create the sales is, 
internet leads and what have you. And that's what you're going to talk about today, like what you do with that and how you're converting those leads, right? You know, to get you guys, you know, and your team back over 200 sales. So Andrew, I'm going to turn it over to you so we can get all your great nuggets. So take it away. Do you want, do you need me to let you share the screen? Do you need, do you have anything to share? Yeah. Yeah. I've got a, a little presentation to go through. Okay. Um, guys, sometimes I have a tendency of speaking pretty quick, um, especially when I'm excited about a topic. So if I start doing that, somebody just wave me down and be like, Hey man, slow down. All right. And if y'all have questions along the way, pop them in the chat and then he's, he'll keep an eye. Um, and then, uh, he'll answer some during the, during the process, or we'll make sure to pick them up at the end. So pop them in the chat. If you have questions along the way. All right, Andrew, you should be able to share your screen. Take it away, buddy. Okay, real quick, just so I can get a feel for the room. Can you guys put down in chat like where you're at, how many deals you did last year, so I can kind of gauge how in depth I should go or how wide I should go? Because if everybody's new, I'd like to go more wide. And if everybody's a little more, more seasoned, I would like to go a little bit more narrow with you guys and give you guys actual tactics. Louis, Louisville, Louisville, 14, another Louisville. 15 spring four deals 12 months nice job tampa nice tennessee 26 nice job paul that's great zero deals angelique that's all right that's all right we'll get we'll get you going you got a couple more here and then i'll start it it looks like most folks are kind of underneath that 12 deal for the most part <clears throat> portland oregon man you guys are in a rough market rachel like rough in a good way. Portland's amazing out there from what I've been hearing. Louisville, four deals. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. I'm going to go a little bit wider with this. Okay, um, for the Southerners, just it's Louisville. Louisville, yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. waiting for somebody to say something when I said it. I was like, nobody. I didn't see anybody. <laughs> L U V, L U V S V I. Louisville. I love it. That's awesome. Um, okay. Um, Gwen, do you have the link, by the way? No, I do not. Okay. If you here. Okay. Yeah, that should be fine. If you want to pop over here. Um, sorry, I've got one of my brand new agents with me. So she's going to sit behind me and, and sit here and watch a little bit. Okay. So we are going to cover kind of the whole gambit of everything. So bear with me if you guys are looking for the actual strategies that we use, my ISA team uses to uh, turn leads at a high level. Um, we're going to have that at the end, and then I'm going to um, I'm going to update a little bit as we go. This is a two year old slide that we're looking at, and um, and so some of the numbers are not correct. So if you see something on there that that is an old NAR number or something like that, please don't jump down my throat. Uh, but we are going to kind of go over the whole gamut, and uh, and we'll discuss all of that. All right. So online lead generation. We can talk about their behavior and then what they do. And this should not have gone to a video. All right, right. let's talk about online lead conversions. Oh, um, sorry, I do some of these for my thing here. Give me just a second. I'll open up the, oh, there we go, presentation. That would probably help. Uh, you're, you're frozen, Kathy, or I mean muted, Kathy. I said, or you could just push play. I was teasing. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, I watched it yesterday and I thought about that. I was like, you know, I could just make this real easy. I wonder if they need this. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, Jesus, this one's like that too. What is going on here? Okay, hold on. Let me stop my share again. Do, do, do. This should be it. Walterboro, South Carolina, huh? It's downloading, guys. Just give me a second. I'm so sorry about this. I'm like way off my game today. I had somebody fly into town yesterday and they're, they were supposed to land at 10 and it just kept getting pushed back. So she didn't land till like two in the morning. And I, my first appointment was at six. So it wasn't great. I wonder if I already downloaded this. I thought I did this yesterday. No, it doesn't look like I did. 
Is there anything in, in particular, this is giving me about 30 more seconds, anything in particular you guys have burning on your mind about lead generation so I can make sure I hit it? As, a, as someone kind of new to real estate, how would you find the one style of lead generation you want and stick with it? There's just so many. I see people getting a little bombarded by all the different types and not being focused enough to get anything yeah. done one style. <laughs> that is a really good question. Um, we, we personally... Um, do it off of, I wonder if I even have a version of this. Let me try downloading this one because um, we base it off of the disc personality. Um, that's how we start directing where we need to go. So whenever I'm hiring an agent, um, first and foremost, like early in my career, I was told like, hey man, um, I did the first disc. Uh, I hadn't sold anything yet. I handed it to my broker at KW. And uh, he looked at it and he was like, hey, you'll be an assistant or out of the business in six months. You're not going to make it like that. You don't have the personality for it is what he told me. He wasn't trying to be rude. He was trying to be helpful. And at the time I was a uh, little obviously taken aback. So I was like, well, dude, like, no, that ain't going to work. So my point with that is I think every personality type can succeed here. I am a, a, a CS personality for those of you that are familiar with the disc. So I'm more that analytical mama bear type. Um, and that's kind of how how I tailor it. So I tailor it based off online leads, for instance, is one that was very good because it's something that I can build the relationship from really far out and, uh, and then kind of thrive there with like a checklist with what a high C likes to do. Here's a checklist, just knock these things out. And that's how I built all of this. So that's how I personally started. So um, if you're, I, I don't have the slides in this class. I teach another class where we kind of narrow that stuff down. Um, but um, we kind of start tailoring it down like a high D personality. You want to do more of the aggressive style um, prospecting, most likely. It's not necessarily meaning that you're going to be good or bad at it. It just means I, I call it like an energy management tool. Um, a high D is going to be be able to have longevity doing things like cold calling and door knocking, whereas a high S, if you put them cold calling and door knocking, they're going to be crying in a few hours because somebody's going to say something mean to them. It just is what it is. And I'm that personality type. I'm not knocking it. I just, I know how it felt when somebody hung up on me or whatever. Um, so a lot of it is, is based on that, Kim. Did that kind of help? Okay. Um, all right. This looks like it's good now. So uh, hopefully no more hiccups from here on out. Uh, can you guys see my screen? Okay. Awesome. Um, and then it went to the other screen. This is great. Uh, do, do, do. Nope, that's not what I want. Well, we're just going to do it this way. Is everybody good with it this way? All right, cool. It's, uh, we're just going to run with it. All right, so first, uh, I want to talk about mindset. You don't have to pay to play for online leads. So if you guys are thinking, okay, well, great, I'm going to have to spend something on Zillow, RealtorTrulia.com, something like that. You don't need to, okay? So I'm gonna talk about a couple of strategies here. Um, are we mostly, we're all EXP in here, right? There might be a couple of people trickled in and around. So um, I'm gonna to talk to you about KV Core and how we do that and how you can build some passive um, lead flow in. So early on in my career, the first thing that I did, um, because I didn't know anybody my entire, I was prior military, my entire squadron picked up and moved two months after I got into real estate. So every human being I knew left the area and I thought I was going to be rich. I was like, that's 110 people that have to sell their home. They're going to use me. And they didn't at all. So I built a website. Um, I didn't really build one. I just built the hyperlinks, backlinks, uh, meta tags, all of that stuff. And it's the same stuff you can do in KB Core. I built that website to get me 110 passive leads per month. It took me about three to six months to build out, probably closer to six before I was getting that kind of lead flow. Um, now it takes about a year. So the strategy is long-term that I'll talk about for that portion. Um, and then there's also pay to play different options as well. And leads aren't the problem. The follow-up system you have is generally the problem. I hear things all the time, like buyers are liars. That's my favorite one. Buyers aren't liars. You're just not asking the right questions. You're not following up properly. 
Um, you're not calling them as, as needed. And then consistency here is vital. So if you ask any of my team members, I use the word consistently all the time. I use it consistently, go figure, because it's the name of the game. And I know it's boring and it's not fun. It's not glamorous, but that's what it is. And that's kind of uh, some of the stuff that we'll talk about here. So in order to attract online leads to you, um, there's several different ways to do it. You've got creating trust in the marketplace, um, search engine optimization. We're going to touch on this a little bit today. Uh, the power of video. If you guys aren't doing video, I notice this a lot with newer agents. Well, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about that and some strategies for you guys to do. You should be on video. Um, we do a bare minimum of nine videos a week. Um, some of those are short term. Some of those are long term. Um, so, you know, some of those are like reels and stories. I don't really count as like a full video, uh, but we do, we do a bunch of those and they're very good for top of funnel to bring people into your circle. So I think of it as like a really big net. So we'll talk about that a little bit. <clears throat> Content creation, that's going to go right along with the power of video because I think those two are paired. We'll talk a little bit about social media, but I'm not a social media guru. So don't think that you're going to get anything great from me. It's going to be kind of plain tips there. Um, but it'll kind of get you in the right in the right mode. And then, of course, we'll talk a little bit about paid leads uh, because you can absolutely do it that way. Um, and there's a lot of options for that. KB Core gives you a bunch of options. EXP gets you options. So we'll talk about that. So first and foremost, to, to create trust in the marketplace, you've got to have somebody know, like, and trust you. Those are the three big things. I know we hear it all the time. I know it's cliche, but it's true. So how do you do that? You're going to have to build that early on, right? So from the moment they get into your trap or your net or your funnel, however you think about it, you should just be dumping value on them. It looks like to us, like they're drip campaigns and bugging people. And I'm putting those in quotations because that's how most real estate agents think. Um, but that's not actually what's happening. These are people um, generally that have raised their hand to get information from you. So we're not really bugging them. We're providing value. And I know I heard that so much as a new agent that I was like, all right, dude, you're just selling yourself, you know, you're just selling it to yourself so that you're okay bugging these people. But it, but it really is true. Um, and we'll kind of talk about the cadence of calling them and talking to them um, and all of that in a little bit too. Uh, being trust by being the expert. I even capitalize the X for everybody here. That's just for you guys. Oops. Uh, let your audience get to know you via content and give freely. Um, don't try to put a trap door behind anything. Just regurgitate the information. We are in the information age. It is everywhere. And as you'll see later with the millennials flooding into the market, it's not only necessary for you to do in your business, it's absolutely vital. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that too. And then keep in mind this number, I'm going to reference this a couple of different times. 70% of consumers base their agent off the first person that provides relevant information. Okay, this does, this does not say the first CMA. It does not say the first auto search on your MLS or anything like that. It's relevant information, and this can be done in a lot of ways. <clears throat> so search engine optimization. Um, I'm going to go through this fairly quickly because I don't want to get bogged down in the details of this portion. There are a ton of videos on YouTube you can watch, but in KV Core, the easiest way to start adding some stuff to your website is first and foremost testimonials. You don't have to get anybody to go do this. If you've already got these on Zillow, Realtor, Trulia, Google, any of those places, just copy and paste them into that as they go. We, I put it in one of my uh, assistance checklists to do this every single month. So they go and they copy paste into the new, into the new um, website. KV Core lets you do this. You can, you know, have your friends testimonial you. If you don't have any sales, you can have you know, past coworkers, hey, this person was great, whatever, but you need to have testimonials out there and not just on your, your KV Core website, but on Google, um, on if you're going to be advertising on Zillow, realtor.com. And I'll touch on this stuff in a little bit too, but you need to have lots of reviews. In fact, for us, when we build out the pathway to success for our agents, um, one of the things that we'll be doing with Gwen here pretty soon is actually like showing three different pathways and we go, okay, how much money do you want to earn this year? 100, 200 or $300,000. And each one of those buckets will have a different rule. And one of those rules is how many reviews you get every week. Um, I think it's absolutely necessary because people are going to search you. Um, we are in the information age first. So people are doing, as you'll see here in a little bit, um, with the timeline of a buyer or a seller, they're very far out when they're doing their research. So you need to wow them and get them in your circle to where they don't want to go anywhere else. <clears throat> uh, let's see. more. Information. 
Sorry, I'm just making sure we're going through this. Other people's listings on Facebook to grow buyer leads. Um, okay, so service areas. This is another good thing. Actually, let me see if I have KV Core up in case you guys don't. Uh, if you actually want to go through it directly. Um, so here's the testimonials that I talked about. It's very simple. You go down here to Web IDX and then add your testimonials from, from Google, okay? Um, you can add them to your individual sites. We do have a team site, so yours is probably gonna look a little bit different. Keep that in mind, but that's really easy to do. You can actually connect your Zillow reviews uh, right here. Um, when it comes to your service areas here, uh, let's see, service areas and SEO, go to view and edit. If you want, you can actually add everything from your MLS right in here. You should have an option, we've already done this to add everything in here. Um, and we're building them out right now on this main website. I've got two other websites, but I just wanted to show you guys the KB Core one. So we're actually hiring somebody out to build all this out, but every one of these should have stuff in them. These keywords, these page texts, write down everything you can about every area you can. All this is doing is up, upping your website ranking and you wanna get hyper local. You cannot compete with Zillow, Realtor, Trulia.com, any of that, okay? So let's say, you're living in Portland, Oregon. I, I know I saw the word Portland up there. You should have a sub area for every neighborhood in Portland that you like to sell in. There's a certain area you want to do. Let's say like here, one of our one of our big ones is called Deer Moss Creek. I would add Deer Moss Creek in here and talk about all the great builders and all of the different types of builds, the types of homes. All of that stuff is going to go here in these page decks. And it's going to build out web pages for you that Google's now going to read through and go, okay, cool. Let's step up this website a little bit. Let's rank them up a little higher or her because they're putting work into this. And then as more people start going in, you start hyperlinking and I'll let you go to Google for all of that stuff because there's a ton of information out there. Um, but this is just very basic stuff. And then you've got custom pages. You guys can add anything you want to these custom pages. As you can see here, we don't have any. I think I'm on the main site here. Um, but on my other one, we have a couple of different ones for, we have like a builder widget and stuff you can add in here. But this is really good for, if you wanted to do like localized content, let's say go to Facebook Marketplace and post every upcoming public event that's happening. And that's just, you want to keep a running tab of that. You could build a, a little, you know, site just for that. And then lastly, um, blogs. Again, I'm not going to beat this dead horse. There's a ton of videos out here on how to do blogs. For those of you that have a little bit of capital to put in your in, into your business, um, you can actually pay for these. You can go on Fiverr.com and get about, 50, I think about 20 of them for 50 bucks. Um, they'll make it keyword rich for you. They'll do a ton of stuff. Just be careful if you do go to something like Fiverr or Upwork to make sure that they're not copy pasting from other sites and creating a blog that way because it's actually going to tank your website a little bit because Google has what's called spiders. They go out to all the websites and they read everything. And if they feel that you're plagiarizing too much from different sites, they'll start de-ranking your site. So it's very important. A lot of people just go to Fiverr and find the cheapest person they can. And all they're doing is going into Google, finding the top three things, highlighting everything and reformatting it. Do you have any questions on that so far? And thank you, Kim. If you can provide all that stuff to get KV core training, that would be awesome. I do um, have a question. A, yeah, Sorry. please. Um, can you go back to the um, service areas and what do you put again in the page text section? Yeah, um, oops. So um, I'll go a little deep on this just because you asked. I, I was kind of going a little bit um, blank, but you want to add keywords that are searchable and hyper-local. Um, I use a system called TubeBuddy. Uh, so let's say I wanna do Deer Moss Creek and I wanna find what it's searching as. If you don't wanna pay for something like TubeBuddy or Keywords Anywhere, those are two tools that will help you build out these keywords. Google actually does a pretty good job for getting started. If you're not sure if this is something you're going to stick to, I suggest just let Google do what it does by doing exactly what I just did. I typed in what I wanted and then click again, and it's going to give you the most common searches that people are searching around those words that you typed in. It's not going to be super accurate, like keyword everywhere or anything like that, but you want to put these in here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy paste this and throw it right into my KB Core right here. 
uh, this isn't Deer Musk Creek, so I'm not going to save this, but that's what I would do. And I would keep adding these keywords. I don't know what the strategy is. Maybe somebody here has taken some of the KV Core training on how many keywords you should have, but I do know you want it to be hyper local because Zillow's adding pages by the thousands daily. And every time they add a page, it hyperlinks to other pages. It says, want to see other homes in 32547, 32548, 32. Every one of those is a hyperlink. Every time somebody clicks a hyperlink, both of the pages rank up a little bit. So when you have this happening with hundreds of thousands of listings every day, you, you're not going to be able to compete with that. So they're using keywords like Niceville, Florida, Niceville Homes for Sale, Portland, Oregon Homes for Sale, but they're not using Port, Portland, Oregon Pool Homes for Sale underneath 250,000. Like that would be a much more dedicated keyword. I wouldn't do that here. I would do that in a blog for that specific of one, but you kind of get the idea. Does that make sense? And then as far as page text, I built this out just like a blog. I don't have them done in any of these, I don't think, other than this one. So what I do is I take um, and build out an entire blog in it. Um, I actually do this in the blog section. There are HTML to whatever, um, I forgot what they're called, uh, where it transfers it into HTML code for you, which is what this is using. If you look at um, these little codes as O slash P, all of this stuff is how it's formatted. It's the spacing, it's the size of the letters, all of that. KV Core, I can't find a way to let it do that automatically. So what I do is I go to the blog and I build it out however I want. And so let's say I'm doing one on Portland, Oregon. Portland, Oregon is amazing. I do some pictures down here. I add links to the pictures. I do all the things that KV Core tells you to do. Um, and then when I'm done, I'm going to go right here to this little um, source code button. I'm going to click that and it's going to open it up for me. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to move it over here to that site content for whichever section I just built out. Okay. When you're doing these, make these as robust as possible. These are the ones that you want to have lots of links going to different parts of your website. Um, again, Google, YouTube, and stuff like that will really help you if this ends up being a thing. I don't want to get trapped into this um, for the rest of the training, um, but a lot of really good ways to do that there. Um, does that kind of answer the question? It does. Thanks. Okay. So make sure it's keyword rich. Figure out what people are searching for, as I kind of mentioned here. Um, and then add value. Google isn't stupid. Don't try to game the system. When I first built the website, there was a really big trick where you would create a white page and put white lettering on it and then just type in the keyword 6,000 times and copy paste it. And then Google would see it and be like, wow, they're talking about Deer Moss Creek a lot. This must be a really good site. Well, that only lasted for about three months. Google changes their algorithm 600 times a, a year. Um, so they're gonna catch on. Um, they're gonna be smarter than you. I can almost guarantee it. <clears throat> so we talked about this, adding all of these things here, keep building onto them. The blogs and stuff, as you saw, like we're only getting up to, I think our biggest blog is like 4,000 views. It's not a lot. And our smallest one has zero. So th this is a long-term play. Um, so don't get too bogged down in this. If you don't know, this is something you're going to want to keep doing forever. Uh, but you can build these websites to get hundreds of leads per month with fairly minimal work, surprisingly. So testimonials, we talked about this, add every realtor you can find manually to every one of the big websites. We don't use Yelp out here. It's not very common in my area, but in a lot of areas, particularly in California and out West, this is really popular, apparently. Um, we don't get anything from it. I built it up for a while and then I gave up on it. If you don't have any reviews, ask your friends, family, past clients to give you testimonials. We've got a rule on our team. It's called the thank you rule. Anytime you hear your client say thank you genuinely for something that you have done, ask for a review. This way you don't have to think about it. You don't have to put in a ton of systems and hope that they remember when they're moving into their property after you just sold them a house and all that stuff. So if you're doing a buyer consult and they say, thank you, this was really good. I get most of my testimonials from the buyer consult because we provide so much value to them. They don't want to go anywhere else. They sign an agreement with us. They do everything. They'll, they'll pay to do our services even because we're providing that value up front. Service areas, we talked about this. I'm not going to beat these dead horses. Um, we talked about all of these blogs, same thing. The power of video. This is just a couple of stats to get your guys' brain thinking. For those of you that are scared of video, I was scared too. Again, high C personality. I want to be behind a computer hiding. I didn't even want my face on the signs. I fought that for years. I had no face on my sides for years. Um, and then there's enough studies out there that I was like, okay, I have to switch that, right? 
73% of homeowners say they're going, they would like to use an agent who uses video. 84% found online information to be crucial. And then millennials take up 37%. This is a 2018 study. This number is actually, I believe, in the 40s now, as according to last year. They make up the largest home buyer in America. It's actually the reason why we have a demand issue right now. A lot of people think we have a supply issue. That's actually absolutely incorrect. We have more supply than we've ever had in history. We just have more demand. So as a millennials flood in the market, they think differently, they act differently, they maneuver differently. And so that's kind of what I based all of this around that we're about to talk about. Um, the second most difficult item for a millennial, and this is from their mouth, this is a poll directly from them, is understanding the home buying process and steps. So does anybody think we can have a few videos about the home buying process and steps in here pretty easily? Every time you get a question, write it down. If you've got a little word, I keep a little word sheet up at all times. If I get a question, I write it down. I address that in one of my videos, whether it's short form content or long form content. It's going to get addressed because if one person is asking it, I guarantee there's 10 more in my pipeline somewhere that are thinking the same thing that just aren't ready to ask that question yet. And by being the first one to provide relevant information, they will stick with me, at least for the most part. You're gonna lose some people, I guess. And then most important trait for the seller is professional reputation. The fastest way to get professional reputation is to show up everywhere. As soon as we started doing videos, we get people all the time telling us like, holy cow, man, you guys are everywhere. In fact, we just started an Instagram reel challenge this month where all of my agents are trying to do one per day. And I've gotten four different people reach out to me and they're like, dude, you guys are everywhere. And I'm like, I don't even know what Instagram reels are. Like, I really don't. My, my assistant helped me with it. She's like, it needs to be fun. It needs to be this. Just shoot this. And I'm like, okay, cool. Do my little dance, whatever you want. And it just takes off from there. <clears throat> um, so given that last page, I think we can all agree that doing video is probably pretty good. I probably could have given you some more compelling content, but I'm telling you guys, like, it's a game changer. If you don't like the way you look, don't worry about it. They're going to see you eventually. So go ahead and rip the bandit off. If you think you're hideous, <laughs> rip it off now. Get them to get used to you before they see you in person, if that makes it easier for you. Um, I kid, obviously, but it, it really is game changing. And then one video can be repurposed into several pieces of content. <clears throat> so whenever we shoot a video, we start with YouTube. Uh, for any of you guys, uh, is anybody aware of uh, Jackson Wilkie, Jesse Dow that do, do all the YouTube videos? Um, they're pretty popular in EXP for those of you that don't know. Um, we follow their same strategy. They actually, I, I saw somebody from Portland, that's where they started. Um, it's absolutely uh, crazy. And yes, you were right. If you're not doing videos, I think you're going to be irrelevant less than three years. I no longer think um, or five years, sorry, I misread that, but I think it's closer to like three. It, I don't think it's a, a bonus anymore. I think it's a, a, what I call a BT, a barrier to entry. Just like posting once a day on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn is a barrier to entry. So is video. Like it just, it just is. That's all there is to it. Um, so if you're not doing it, you're going to get, you're going to get lost in the dust. You're going to stay uh, um, at a low sale count, which might be okay for some people. If you're only wanting so many per year to kind of pay for vacations, things like that, like I'm not knocking you. Um, but the, the reach is incredible. You shoot one video that takes me, I mean, yesterday, I think it took me all of about three minutes to shoot a video. Um, we got two videos out of it, uh, for short form content, got like 6,000 views. And I don't even have any viewers on Instagram. We have like 300 people on our page. We're just now starting to build it up. So that's the power of this kind of reach. Our YouTube videos have anywhere from 500 views all the way up to about 25,000. And it just brings in a ton of money. YouTube alone, I think brought in almost a hundred thousand dollars of income just from that portion. Um, so if you guys don't have somebody in your city doing YouTube videos, do them. It's very good. Take Jesse's course and Jackson or Jesse and Jesse's course. It's really good. They'll walk you through everything. They've got a boot camp. They'll literally take you and walk you through it and be like, cool. So type in this here, do this here. It's super simple. <clears throat> um, and then you can use that, that same video that you're doing and we just chop it up. So if I'm talking about five best things to do in the area, um, I'm not only going to have those five things in one long YouTube video, I'm going to chop them up and those are going to be blog posts. It's going to be one big blog post and then maybe I'm going to chunk a couple of them out. Then I'm going to take a chunk out and then I'm going to do those into short form content. And then I'm going to do a couple of those and then we're going to do posts. So you'll notice my, uh, I don't do any of these, my admin does all of this, but they'll take that same thing and go, okay, cool. The five best things to do in Fort Walton Beach were this, 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 and this, and it'll be a blog post. And she'll do a little video thing for it too, because video is king, right?
uh, let's see, video ideas. Um, just to make it real easy, I've given you guys some really good video ideas here. It, it's not cosmic. Um, I used to hear that, again, I'm kind of being contradictory because I used to hear that when I was a new agent, like it's not that hard, just video what you're doing. And I remember sitting in you know, the seat that maybe some of you guys are sitting in now going, dude, yeah, easier said than done. You know what you're doing. I don't know what I'm doing yet. Got it. I get it. Then don't, don't even worry about doing anything real estate. Do neighborhoods you serve. That's real estate, right? But you could do restaurants. Why not do every restaurant in town and be blasting that out, right? Um, a lot of people are doing pretty good with Facebook groups and doing like a Fort Walton Beach Eats or wherever you're from, right? So Portland Eats. Um, I don't remember some of the other cities, but you kind of understand that, right? You can interview these restaurant owners. Now you're getting in their good graces. You're bringing them, excuse me, into your sphere of influence. And then you're starting to nurture them. And we'll talk about what that stuff looks like here in a bit. Local things to do, interview business owners, teachers, political figures, real estate topics are obviously very easy. Market trends, hobbies, fun trends go live. I'll tell you this, I love my YouTube days. Like when I get to go out and shoot some video, get out of the office and kind of escape, you know, take my drone out, you know, shoot something silly, something fun. I come back in here. I've got editing equipment all around me or video equipment all around me. Like it's great. It's a nice little break. And it's fun watching that stuff come in. It's fun watching these comments come in. And then it's even better when these leads come in and they think we're rock stars, right? Like they literally call and they're like, I don't want anybody but you because I've got another girl helping me with the videos. And they're like, I need Andrew. And I'm like, man, that feels good to say. Like somebody, you know, calls me at $1.5 million and they're like, I need you and I don't want anybody else. Will you please work with me? I'm like, I guess I'll, I'll make some time for it. <laughs> you know, it's really great. They think you're a celebrity and that's just one avenue, right? Hey, um, Andrew, what is yeah. your YouTube channel? Is it just your name or do you have it named something else? No, it's uh, living on uh, life on the Emerald coast. Okay. So y'all can check out his YouTube life on the Emerald coast and get ideas. Yeah. You'll see me in a weird white blazer uh, pointing yeah. into the water, all corny like, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's me. Um, and the videos you'll notice they follow the same, the same strategy we're we're taking it right out of jesse and jackson's playbook yeah, yeah. so there's there's no secret there yeah and, and i uh, think jerry lynn had her hand up oh she's asking it there uh, that's a joke yeah. channel junkies is their they're kind of like their top of line funnel so if you want to get inside of their circle just search channel junkies on facebook um, they have a YouTube channel. They give you so much free content. It'll make you sick. You don't even need to pay for their boot camp. I promise you, if you watch their videos, they're going to tell you just about everything you need to know. Um, it's, it's incredible. And what's great is um, most of it was done. The first six months was done with this. I didn't have a drone. I didn't have a GoPro. I didn't have anything. I just had this. So if you look at the first couple of videos, it was right during COVID. If you see me with a big beard, I look like a homeless man. That's one of the first videos. I literally had a beard down here. I looked disheveled. I looked like a disheveled mess. And I was like, you know what? I'm tired of waiting around. COVID's just sitting here. I'm not doing anything. Let's get to work. Turned on the camera, shot a video, 25,000 views later. I was like, I don't know what's happening, but all right, let's just keep running. And some of them are duds, but some of them, some of them are great. And the way I've leveraged it out is I shoot the videos. It goes into Dropbox. I've got an admin uh, in the Philippines that I pay four, four and a half bucks an hour. She edits all the videos. She does all the keywords. She does all the research. She does everything. It's 100% on her. All I got to do is shoot a video. She'll even research topics if I need to. Um, she'll post on social media. She does my blogs. All of that is completely handled. So if you guys are at a point where you can leverage, um, definitely look into that. I can get you guys a uh, name of a great company that can help you headhunt for that. So content creation, everything you create should be repurposed on several platforms, make it relevant and interesting, blast it everywhere, don't be shy, um, depending on your content. I'm not a big fan of like the justice and just sold strategy, it works, but I don't like it. So I like to throw a lot of content out. So if you guys follow us on any of our social media, my team is named the Emerald Group. So you can find it probably by searching me, but for the most part, it's the Emerald Group. You'll notice we do more fun posts, it'll be funny pictures, like weird things that we see at houses, Stuff like that. I like it to be a little bit more engaging um, and take snippets of everything that you do and re-blast it everywhere. So I've got certain days, like on Fridays, my, my admin has me shoot everything, like in three second clips with this phone. I'm eating food, I double clack, I do like a three second thing, I move it weird and she does stuff with it. I don't know what's happening, but um, it's working. So I'm just gonna run with it. 
uh, blogs, videos, podcasts, social media posts, all this stuff. These are great avenues. Just try to create as much value in the marketplace as you can. <clears throat> um, this is really old. So I'm going to don't take don't look at this because we're going to kind of talk about this a little bit differently because Instagram personal is garbage now. Or it's not garbage, but Instagram per business is where it's at. And I'll tell you why. But social is, is popular. This is in 2020. I think the average person spent 15 minutes a day on Facebook. I read somewhere that this is almost like three hours now or something stupid like that. And then between Instagram and Facebook and all the other social platforms, it's some ridiculous number. I'm not even going to try to quote it, but it's pretty high. So the point of this is you need to be on social. If you guys are not already, if you're one of those that are too proud, well, I've not had a Facebook before. You're losing business. People can, if they cannot find you, you will lose business from this. I guarantee it. Um, you need to talk the way other people want to listen to you. It's a love language, just like anything else. Um, so we'll talk about this a little bit, um, hopefully here in a few minutes. I'm going to have to go pretty quick to get to that portion. But when we're talking to our leads, we talk to them in their language. If they hit us up on Facebook, we're talking to them in Facebook. They hit us up on Snapchat. I've closed two deals from Snapchat alone where I never did anything but open up Snapchat. I didn't do text messages. I didn't do phone. I mean, other than like phone calls and consults, right? But for the most part, it was done there. So speak the way they want to speak, okay? So you guys should be on all of the platforms. Um, Facebook Live used to be really, really popular. I think it's gone down the deep end pretty hard. It's still good to do. If you're worried about like, oh, well, it's not going to be that polished, try to, try to, Try to do a Facebook Live if you can work up the guts to do it, because then you don't have to worry about it. It's done for you. It doesn't have to be Facebook. There's also platforms that will go live on several different platforms at once that you can use. I don't have those off the top of my head, but if you guys Google that, I'm sure that will come up. And then something like 42% of the world's population. We all know social media is a good place to be, okay? So there's lots of places here. You guys can go YouTube, MySpace, whatever you want. Maybe not MySpace. Don't do that. Uh, I'm not going to go over that. Um, we use social media as kind of a, a heavy driver to bring traffic back to our website. The main rule of thumb, um, if you're underneath probably like 100 sales, is your website should be your funnel for everything. Everything should point towards your website, not necessarily every social media post. Don't go crazy pants with it. You don't want to link outside of the social medias when you can help it. It's actually not good for the algorithm. But for the most part, everything should be back to there because that's where your value is. You're providing a search, you're providing some great stuff. And KV Core does so much for you guys, it's ridiculous. If you let it go, it will text your leads, it will notify you when somebody saves properties, it'll notify you when they do certain things, it'll email them for you. Um, I think you should still build campaigns and stuff that we'll talk about here in a few minutes. Um, but that's, uh, it's definitely helpful to do that. So paid leads, there's lots of these out here, Realtor, Zillow, CRM generated leads, Google pay-per-click. Guys, KV Core has a ton of different options. Um, their Google pay-per-click is outstanding. That's the best ROI we get on the team. Um, we spent a total of about 25,000 and some change in leads last year for direct leads like this. Um, and we turned it into 100, and, I think it was 147,000 something and some change, right? Big numbers. This is a slot machine that we get to keep playing. And every time I see those numbers, I keep racking that slot machine up because I'm like, okay, well, I don't care if I'm paying 1500 bucks a month or 2000 bucks a month, if I'm getting 9,000 out of it, I'll play that slot machine all day. So if you guys want to start leveraging things out, this is a way to do it. Um, you've also got a lot of um, referral fee sites right now. For those of you that are just starting, I'm not a real big fan of these in the long term. I don't personally like them. Um, because you'll end up paying way more per lead than if you just bought the leads yourself or if you procured them with sweat equity. Um, but you have those options. There's a ton of them. Redfin does it. Um, I, I think there's like 15 or so I've got on a list somewhere. If you guys ever want to get on those, um, you can always do that. They'll take a 25 to 40% referral. It'll suck when you're paying that out, but it's giving you something to do if you don't have a lot of business. I would start planning to ease that out of your business when you start hitting that income that you like, start fading some of them out. Uh, yeah, I'll try to get you that list, uh, Kim. I'll try to blast it out. I'll blast it out in the Facebook thing. Um, I'll have to dig and find it. I'm not gonna be able to find it while we're sitting here. On that workplace, <coughs> I tagged you on would be the best place, that workplace freedom team page. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So why spend all this time and energy procuring a lead if you're not gonna pursue them? Most agents spend a ton of money on leads and they're abysmal at conversion. And it's ludicrous to me. 
Um, a good conversion will keep your, your dollar that you're spending down. And then even better when you set that baseline and then every everything else now bumps on top of that. Once you build the systems out in KV Core, once you follow it, once you're used to coming in from nine to 11 every day, knocking out your tasks, guys, all I have to do since I've built this out, when I go into KV Core, see these 32 tasks right here, most of these are going to be old. Please forgive me. I'm way behind. I've had a lot of trips. But all I know is I have to clear out these tasks every single day. And if I do those, I will make half a million dollars this year in income. Like 100%, that's all I've got to do because the systems are done. I'm going to show you real briefly on how to do that as well. Could that be helpful to anybody? Kind of good, right? Okay. So let me try to get to it real quick. Most agents only attempt one phone call to the lead. <clears throat> um, they, they may email a couple of times and then they're going to give up because they think they're pestering them. Guys, we are busy. We're all busy. It's not just you. The world is busy, okay? Especially people in homeowner range in their 30s. The average homeowner is 34 years old in this country. People are busy in their 30s. This is when they're hustling. This is when they're getting to the next level. This is, you know, they're building their family, you know, all of that good stuff. So call them multiple times. It is insane to me. Look at some of these numbers. Um, the average consumer is on seven different websites. You're competing with seven agents. You better get good at this, right? Because you're going to have to beat them out. And I'll show you some strategies on how to do that. In six months, the average lead is called 1.2 times. This is based on real estate professionals' honest feedback. This is not what the consumer thinks. This is what real estate agents said. I looked in my CRM and I'm averaging 1.2 phone calls per lead. I paid $1,000 for the lead, but they're only worth one phone call to me. That's crazy pants. Um, so 43% of consumers believe they never received a response from an agent after asking for help. This is the person that went on Zillow and said, I want to see this home. 43% believed they did not see any contact. I guarantee they had contact, but most people don't think about it. They see a missed call and they're not thinking, oh, that's probably that agent I just, just reached out to, right? So keep that in mind and smile. This is great news because this right here is your competition. Those seven agents you're competing with are averaging 1.2 phone calls. So I'm gonna show you a strategy. Um, I'm gonna to have to blast through this really quick. This is kind of the timeline of it. So most buyers and sellers are 27 and 21 months out. It's actually a little further than this. I, I believe it's closer to about 31 months now. In this section right here, they're not even doing anything yet. Like they're, they're not even telling their spouse a lot of times. They're sitting in bed, they're clicking on sites. So when we talk about top of funnel, bottom of funnel, this is kind of what we're talking about. Top, middle, bottom. Let me go to the next page, kind of show you this. Sorry, I'm going through here pretty quick. Um, I wanna go over this super quick. When they're in the earlier phases, you need relevant content. This is how millennials search. They want all the information until they exhaust their options. Then they wanna to talk to a person. Okay, now I know this isn't the demographic everybody's going after, but it's a demographic that's flooding the market. You're going to have them in your marketplace if you're not going with them a lot now. And then once they get a little bit closer, they want value proposition. This could be your unique selling proposition. So if you're offering a free move, a free home inspection, a free whatever, whatever is allowed in your state, if you're doing something like that, that's one version. But another version is a consultation. Um, so actually sitting down and going over their, their entire process. And I'm sorry, I'm going to skip a ton of this stuff, guys, because I know we're running out and I want to be respectful of your guys' time. When you're looking at top of funnel, these are going to be colder leads they are going to take longer. You're going to get more of these. These are going to be cheaper. These are going to be like Facebook leads. Your middle funnel is going to be like your Google pay-per-click. These are somebody that are further along in the process are now searching dedicated searches. Fort Walton Beach homes for sale. That is a more middle of the funnel lead. You'll turn a little bit more of these and the um, process time is about six months to close, sometimes a little bit longer. And then bottom of the funnel, these are your realtor.coms, your Zillows. They call, they want to see a property tomorrow. I don't like doing a lot of bottom of the funnel leads because I don't like popcorning. That's what I call it, or pop tarting. And that's where you get a phone call and they're like, I want to see this house. And you pop tart, and like, you know, a pop tart out of a little thing and you run out and you show it. I don't do that. I don't let my agents do it. We come in here for a meeting because we save a ton of time doing it that way. Um, and we will lose business when we do that. I know a lot of people are like, but we might lose this business. You're 100% right. You might lose that business. But you're going to lose like one piece of business for every 10 times you do that. And you're going to save nine times. And during those times, you can prospect and find more leads. So the follow-up plan that we use is right here. And I'm going to show you how it's broken down here in a second. But we do eight phone call attempts, four emails, five text messages, and five videos in the first week. 
These are all automated. Do not let this scare you. We build this out in KB Core and it happens automatically. The only thing that does not is the phone calls. And my ISA does that or my concierge. Um, it's something that I started and then I hand it off to somebody. She's handed it off to somebody. We're actually hiring another one. We're in the process of finding them right now. The follow-up plan looks like this. And I've made some changes to these that I'm going to tell you guys on the fly here. But day one is we always double tap the first phone call we get. Double tap means we call. It goes to voicemail. We hang up. We call right back. This way, the consumer on the other end goes, wow, this must be important. They might stop what they're doing. Be mindful of their time when you're doing this. One of the biggest things um, that I see a lot of new agents do when they start using these strategies is to try to get all the information on this thing. They didn't answer the first time because they were in the middle of something and they don't want to be bothered. Or maybe they just don't want to be bothered in general. So this is just a good touch point if you have to use it. If they pick up, go ahead and use it. And then obviously use your judgment for all of this. If it feels like it is uh, too often, back off a little bit, whatever. But don't be a wuss about it. OK, so if you just don't want to call because you're feeling insecure that it's too often on any of these strategies, then that's not really a good excuse. Make the phone calls. I promise you, you're going to turn a lot more. So we do an introduction uh, email with video. KB Core lets you do this. It's 50 bucks a month for video. They give you a version of BombBomb. I actually pay for BombBomb directly so I can send these from my personal email because I find it a little bit less clunky, but it's a little bit cheaper on KB Core. So go ahead and use that if you want. We do an auto text. Hey, Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so, uh, we're in an appointment right now. If you're a one-man show and you're doing all the calling, uh, my first auto text was, hey, I just saw your, your request come through on 123 Main Street. I'm in the middle of an appointment right now. I'll call you back this afternoon or tomorrow or whatever, right? This way, now they have the expectation. And if you call them before, if you're sitting there and it comes in and you call them, and they go, that's so weird. I thought you just said you'd call me in like an hour. And you go, oh, yeah, I had a little bit of time. My meeting, you know, just roll with it. OK, I'm not saying lie to anybody, but it gives you a little bit of buffer time because speed to lead is so important on these leads, especially the further in the bottom of the funnel you go. If they're on Zillow going, I want information about this house. And then they click off to search dog biscuits for you know, little roughy or whatever, they're, you're, they're gone, right? So don't, don't do that because they're just gonna click on that website again. That's why Zillow sends out so many leads because they're sending the same lead out almost 15 times a pop. Um, probably not 15, I made that number up, don't, don't quote me on that. Make sure you add them to search alerts and market reports This is part of our initial thing. We have a, a new lead ISA campaign that we built that does all of this stuff and it reminds them to double check it. So if they say, hey, I'm looking for a $350,000 home, but the search alert did a $450,000 home, we're going to adjust it. Day two, we're going to call in the morning. We're not going to leave a voicemail. Um, and these strategies, like not leaving voicemails, double tapping, these are good, but don't be fooled that these are going to be like make or break. I know a lot of people will look at this stuff and be like, oh man, I forgot to double tap. Like, don't worry about it. It's not that big of a deal. They're just tactics, okay? Hey, um, Andrew, we've got about two minutes. I mean, I know you had said yesterday you could stay a little bit longer if anybody wants to, but um, I know it looks like you've got a couple of screens left. So um, if anybody wants this, if you haven't already, take a screenshot of this. And then if you'll just touch on your last two, and then you can we can stay around for a few minutes past time for anybody that wants to. But um, I do want to make sure we're respecting our time frame that we've told people. Yeah, that's awesome. So if you guys need to back out, go ahead and back out. Like, like she said, I'll stay here a few, a few more minutes. This is just the first week. We actually extended this out to, I think it's 12 days now where we keep calling. And then our follow-up program <clears throat> is, um, our email program is like 450 or 480 days long. And it drips in email like every three to five days. Um, the strategy for this is easy. I could give you guys everything we've got but it's so much easier. Check out what I did. I'm, I'm a big believer in r and There's a great website called Property Spark. If you go on propertyspark.com, I think the way I always find it, I don't know if it's propertyspark.com, but it's Property Spark, and then I search the state. So Property Spark, Florida. And what it's going to do is it's going to come up with a list of the top 100 agents that are doing really good on social media. Um, this is just one way to do it. Go follow a few of those people, find out where their websites are, sign up on their websites. Find some other big players, sign up on their websites, make a, create a fake email, create um, uh, maybe a different phone number if you don't want your phone to blow up, um, and then track everything they do. Every time they call, every time they text, every time they email, write it down in a spreadsheet or something if you're nerdy like I am, and, and I am, I did this. 
and I did every little one and I would put little links to all of the vid, uh, all of the, the emails. The reason being people are spending big money on places like Happy Grasshopper that they will build this stuff out for you. And I'm not trying to shoot Dan in the foot who owns Happy Grasshopper, but these people are using sites like that to create the best content by the best people in the world. And all you have to do is go to their website and sign up and you're going to get all of their proprietary information. Do it. So that's how we built it. What I would do is about every six months, I start out with like 20 emails that would go out. And every six months, I'd go on somebody's new thing and I would write it all down. I would throw them in a folder in Gmail and it would all go in there. And then once a month, I'd go through there and go, okay, cool. They called me on this date, this date, this date, this date. Here are the emails. I'm going to put those in my email campaign. I'm going to adjust my follow-up plan from here. And then after week one, um, everything goes on a drip. So we've created in KV Court, super simple guys, create a one day drip, um, three day, seven day, two week, 21 day, one month, three month, six month. Okay. If you can't remember all those, it's fine. Just put them in iterations that make sense to you. And all you got to do is put set agent task reminder for that cadence. If it's one day, you do it every day for 10 days. If it's seven days, you do every seven days for 10 weeks or whatever. And all you have to do is whenever somebody contacts you and they say, oh, great, thank you for calling. Yeah, we're looking, but we're nine months out. Um, the easiest way to do this is cut whatever they say in half. And then that's the plan that you put them on. Um, so if they say I'm three months out, you don't have a one and a half month plan, but you have a one month plan. So you're going to add them to that campaign. And in one, then you're going to put notes. Hey, they said they're not ready for three months. That's going to be roughly April 15th. So that's a note in there. When it comes up in one month for you to follow up with them in this task list right here, um, it's going to say so-and-so is whatever. I'm going to open it up, you know, or somebody's anniversary, whatever it is. Um, and it's just going to say something like this. This is what it says. Check in SOIC client. This is one of my sphere of influence. I put every one of my sphere of influence people on one of four campaigns, A, B, C, or D. It's very simple. A's get touched once a month. B's get touched once every three months. D, uh, C's are once every six months. And D's I either delete or it's once a year. This is for the people that I don't think the deal went well, but I still want to contact them because I was surprised one day. Um, I had a bad deal with this the other agent did something shady there was galvanized piping he was trying to hide it was this messed up stuff she didn't find out till after she moved in she wanted to sue the guy I thought she hated me and I put her on this D drip and when it came by I was in mode I wasn't thinking I was just dialing and I was going to delete it I was like oh I need to make sure I delete it I don't need to contact her um, and I accidentally dialed it and her voice was very distinct. She's Colombian and she lit up. She's like, uh, I was like, oh, hey, Eliana, you know, she's checking in. She, oh my gosh, Andrew, I can't believe it's been so long. And, and she raved and ranted and was so happy. And here I thought I had a bad experience. She ended up giving us a great review after that. And I've stayed in touch with her ever since. She sent me her son already. He's purchased and all because I thought it was going to delete it. So this is a very simple way. Every human being that you meet that you think you can talk to should go on one of those campaigns. If you do nothing else, if this training did nothing else, if you do that portion, the A, B, C, or D, you'll make more money than you know what to do with. The average <clears throat> for every 100 people you have in your database, you should get anywhere from 12, 12 to 21 sales based on common math, okay? So if the average person, according to NAR, buys every 12 years, which is actually a little bit more transient than that, I think it's closer to nine, but I don't think the data is caught up with it, then you're going to get 8.3 sales for every 100 people you have. From there, two to four of them are going to be buy-sell combos, so that's up to 12 sales. And then from there, you should get about seven referrals. Every person should know seven people, but they're only going to get in front of about three of them to refer you. And if you're staying on top of them every three months, like Miss April Bittler here, who doesn't even live in this area, but she still sends me people, Christian Garcia, one of my main investors, like every time I do these touches, it's just reminding them to send more people. And th that strategy alone, plus doing one-on-one -on -one lunches actually took me from personal sales. I was stuck at about 40 sales and it took me up to 60 overnight. We were actually just talking about that this morning. Um, so a great strategy there that has nothing to do with the training that we were on, but it just popped in my head. Do you guys have any questions? I, I know I kind of just ranted a lot and a lot of times I get feedback from folks and I know it's kind of hard when we're on a Zoom like this. Any questions at all? Cool, that cool. Was so good, man. That Sorry, was, was and, so and it's a lot of information. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Kathy. I was just saying that is so much great information um, for sure.
I mean, I think we should have you back on to kind of maybe even expand a little bit further if people want that. Um, you know, I think you can go deeper on all of that information, but man, there were so many good tips. But yeah, does anybody have any questions um, at all? I know we were at, he, a few were asking along the way. Yeah, I didn't, I wasn't actually keeping up with the chat. So I don't know if there was any questions. If I didn't get to one of your questions, can you throw it back in there? I don't think, I was kind of keeping an eye. I don't, I don't feel like any, I don't, I feel like you answered any, um, um, they can't, and you did see this, Kim said, yeah, if we could put that list that you had mentioned in the uh, workplace group um, on Freedom Team, that'd be fantastic. Uh, and that's for the paid sites, right? Yeah. yeah referral sites. Awesome. Yeah. So, and if you guys aren't using Workplace for referrals too, holy cow, I think we got like seven sales from that last year. EXP is great. I never got that at ERA or Keller Williams ever. Yeah. It's so I, great. I talk about that all the time too. Like our referral side is just so good. You know, turn your notifications on for that group specifically and then just keep, stay on it, you know, keep, in, keep on it. Um, I mean, there's so many referrals get passed around. So, um, if no one has questions, and I know we're a minute over or, or five minutes over, but real quick, one or two people just throw out some great tip you just got today. Give Andrew some good feedback on, you know, a great tip you took away. Or terrible feedback. <laughs> Tell me that this was a waste of an hour and I could adjust no, it. <laughs> it awesome. Absolutely not. No way. This was great. There was so much I couldn't pick, you know, one or two to put out, but I, I definitely need to um really jump into the heart of kv core and and you know master it what oh out. yeah that's so huge guys so i've used um sync boomtown follow-up boss and market leader oh and brevity and when i saw kv core and i opened up the back door of that i was like this is like boomtown but better and more up to date and more options. What the heck am I doing? I dropped follow up boss that day. You want to know how hard it is? I had 15,000 people in my database when I swapped over. That is hard. I had to hire somebody like we have this whole attack. It's so amazing. I love Cape Core. Like it's it's clunky sometimes, you know, I'll give it that, but it's it's awesome. Yes. And how much were you paying for those sites? What, 1500 plus? <laughs> oh, yeah. I think follow up boss was up to 750 for our size at the time. Um, and that was pretty basic. Mm -hmm. Boomtown would have been like two grand. And that's before ad spend and stuff, or 1500 maybe it was. Um, I think when we got in, it was like 1200 a month. And that was before ad spend. And then the ad spend, as much as I, you know, I'm not knocking anybody that has Boomtown, but their systems are fairly old the last time I looked, but it's been two years. They're probably updated but they were becoming like second place and sync was taking over and then KV core came into the market. And if you guys utilize the stuff in the marketplace, guys, we retarget all the stuff that's in there that you're like, Oh, I don't really know if that works. We do it. I have no idea if it works either. That's the one metric that makes me cringe because I can't track it. And I'm a kind of a data nerd. Um, but I know that my, my ads chase people around the internet and they do it. And I don't have to, I used to actually have to spend about two hours a week building out campaigns into Facebook to chase people which you can still do guys. You can actually take your database right out of KV Core, drop it into Facebook and drop ads just on that based on their emails. It's the greatest thing in the world. You can retarget them forever. It's crazy and it's crazy cheap. Like I'm talking like 150 bucks. I can follow them around for a month, 15,000 people for a month. It's incredible. And I just bring them right back to the website. And every time I do one of those, um, the, the, you know, everything shoots up. It's pretty awesome. I mean, that's so good, you know, for everybody that's on here. I mean, you just heard somebody that sells at the level that Andrew does talk about how he used all those other sites, paid all that money for those other sites. And when he made the move to EXP, switched everything to KV Core and feels like it's the best tool out there. And you know, if you're not with EXP, you're, you know, you can go get KV Core, but you're paying 500 plus a month. And so it's such a value proposition for us at EXP when you're out there talking to agents to really hear from somebody who's utilizing at a high, high level, um, how powerful the tool is. You know, there's so many agents at EXP that isn't taking advantage of that tool. Um, 
you know, and it's a robust tool. It's not like you're going to sit down in an hour and you're going to learn it, but it's worth it. If you learned, if I learned anything today of what, what all you said, and there was so many good tips, it's like, it's worth the investment of your time to get good at KB core and create these drip campaigns and these, you know, set this I think we lost Kathy. Up. It's so powerful. So, Andrew, such great information. Um, you know, we may reach out and have you back on a second time, um, maybe to even go to a tad bit deeper. I know everybody just got such great value out of this. It was so good. So, any final questions before we wrap up? And if you guys have anything personal for me, um, just DM me on any of the social um, Facebooks, generally, the one that I read the most most of the time it'll be one of my admin i do have four assistants that watch stuff like that for me um but you guys can always hit me up on my facebook um and i should respond there what would be your first tip for like uh if money is tight what would be the first thing you would do through kv kv core to help yourself out use their free tools man they have so many free tools in there squeeze pages landing pages stuff like this um build those out and 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 put people into them using your organic reach. Um, I'm assuming, you know, when you say low money, I'm, I'm assuming none. So sweat equity is first. Um, I would put a little bit of work into the website, but that's a really long-term thing. That's if you're confident that you're sticking around for a year, because you're not going to see the benefits of that for at least a year, right? Like we just started doing our campaign for our website maybe a month ago and we're soft rolling it. As you saw, all those little boxes were empty. And we're only getting like six leads a month passively. But I, I literally spent less than 30 minutes probably on it so far just to get there. So if you guys aren't getting organic leads, you can definitely build that up pretty quick. But it'll take a while. Andrew, do you have any um, short clip training videos that you've done for your team that you could possibly share in the Facebook, I mean, in the uh, Workplace Freedom Team group? Have you done uh, anything that you've that are you know maybe like 10 short videos like these are the first 10 things one would do have you done that um not for that per se i am in the middle of building rebuilding our training for our team so i do have about 40 hours of content that i've already shot very similar to when i was struggling in the beginning and it kept showing a video that i shoot those all the time because we do a baseline online with all of the videos like you can ask Gwen; she's in the middle of that right now and then it just kind of starts the process. So we do have a lot of that that I could probably add. And we're also building an actual training um, to put out there in the world for people to go and join. Um, so if anybody wants to join that, it's probably months from being done. But if I teach on here again, when it gets closer, um, I'll throw it out to everybody with a free link or something so that you guys can see some of the main core tenets that we do. Because there's some great stuff out there that like people aren't talking about for some reason. And I didn't start hearing about it until I start going to these big masterminds that are five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars a seat. And then we start hearing the stuff. And I'm like, what the heck? Like I I just launched something so simple the other uh, maybe a, a month or so ago from a mastermind I was at. And since then I've gotten quoted in Inman, Yahoo, Go Banking Rates. Um I'm trying to think they realtor.com. Um, I've been quoted on all these different websites. And part of that is to get backlinks to my website to raise it up. So that's the reason why I'm doing it. But it's also pretty freaking cool when you get to say Yahoo Finance did an entire piece on me. Who the heck am I, right? Like that's kind of cool, if nothing else. But that's an ego thing. And I'm not really into that portion, but it still feels cool. Hey, we're all realtors. We all got egos. <laughs> hey, <buddy. laughs> That's it. Thank you, everybody, for being on. And um, yeah, so we're gonna we'll um, have you back one day soon, Andrew. Thank you so much for your time and just all the amazing content. Appreciate. Yeah, it. absolutely. Next time I'll be a little bit more rested and ready. I think you came in and delivered. <laughs> Thanks so much. Yeah, absolutely, guys. Take care, Bye, everybody.